So we're going to talk about more cardiac stuff. Basically, we're going to go over the heart, like I mentioned before, we're going to go over the heart, we're going to go over the physiology of the heart, how the blood flows through the heart, and then also electrophysiology. We're going to look at the anatomy of an EKG strip, call it that just because we have to point out what each individual thing means so that you can understand when you're looking at rhythms what you're looking at. We'll talk a little bit about uh, the EKG. I meant EKG, not leads. Leads we'll talk more um, in the next stream because the next stream is when we really have to look at lead placement and what what each lead looks at. So we're gonna we're gonna cover that for the next one as long as there's no other um, study questions. But we could probably do both. And then we're gonna look at some simple rhythms, some that'll just kind of set you up for working in uh, med surge units, a lot of units now, regardless of where you're at, they have remote telemetry or remote tele. So it's really good to be able to just pick up your tele box or look on the monitor and say, okay, yeah, it's this or that. This is normal sinus rhythm. This patient's in AFib. So we'll go over some simple rhythms and then we'll build off of those rhythms. I have a lot of animations in this. Some of them are goofy. Some of them help me remember or bring up memories of what things are. So lots of different things and for entertainment purposes. So let's go ahead and get started. If you don't follow this artist, you need to. It's called, he's called the Awkward Yeti. He has a lot of different organs and cartoons with them. He's got like the stomach and tongue and kidneys and gall, bladder. Anyway, some of his main characters is the heart and the brain. And a lot of times they're at odds. They're almost like best friends in the cartoons, but they're at odds because you know, the heart is very emotional and the brain is very logical. So this one, it made me laugh out loud as I was going through the different ones. So I thought I'd share it with you guys, but definitely check them out. Um, he even has a store. He has t-shirts. You can buy his cartoons and poster. And then he also has, I don't know if they're plushes or plushies or whatever you call them, stuffed animals is what I grew up knowing them as, of each of the organs that he has cartoons of. And I really wanted to get the gallbladder with gallstones, but he had sold out of those. So, But they're very cute very creative. They make me laugh. So the awkward Yeti. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the heart and blood flow. So we've got two, we've got four chambers of the heart. We've got the atriums. Where's my pen? There we go. So you got the right atrium, the left atrium, right ventricle and left ventricle. And these are the four chambers that will, that essentially make up the heart or make up the pump. And this, we're, we're not going to go in super big detail. You can go into detail with the different layers of the heart and the vasculature of the heart, but we're going to just go with what we need to know for this study session. So we got the right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. And these are separated by valves and this, the septum here. So you got the atrial septal, ventricle septal down here, and then you've got the valves. So the best way to remember which side has the three leaf valve or the tricuspid valve and which side has the mitral valve or the two leaf one is if you can remember, which is hard for me to remember, I just can remember right versus left. There's a few different ways. One, the right lung has three lobes. The left lung has two lobes. The right ventricle, right has more letters than left. Right tricuspid, there's more leaves in a tricuspid, so tricuspid is on the right. The left has less letters in left. Mitral valve only has two leaves, so mitral is on the left. 
And then you've got these valves here, or let me go back to those valves. So the tricuspid and the mitral valve, those are the valves that separate the atrium and the ventricles. So here's the tricuspid valve separating right atrium from right ventricle, and with the mitral valve, left atrium with the left ventricle. And then you've got two other valves, the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve. And these separate the ventricles from of the other structures of the body. So the pul pulmonary valve is the valve that uh, separates the ventricles from the pulmonary artery. And one thing to remember about the pulmonary artery, a lot of times we think that arteries carry oxygenated blood. Not all, not all the time. This is the artery that does not carry oxygenated blood. So instead of thinking about arteries as vessels that carry oxygenated blood, you should think about arteries as vessels that carry blood away from the heart. The venous system brings blood back to the heart, arteries bring blood away from the heart. So pulmonary artery brings blood away from the heart and pushes it into the lungs where it gets oxygenated and then returned through the pulmonary veins to the left atrium. So we got the pulmonary valve and then we've got the aortic valve. And the aortic valve separates the left ventricle from the aorta, separates the blood in the left ventricle or the left ventricle from the aorta where the blood goes all over the rest of the body. So one another thing is the valves are not the valves, you gotta think about the valves almost like they're automatic. Valves open and close in the heart from pressures. It's not a mechanical actual mechanism that a muscle that shuts the valves. It's the pressures in the different chambers changing that opens and closes them. So through the cardiac cycle, we've got blood that's coming up through the inferior vena cava, coming down the superior vena cava, and it all falls into the right atrium. And as it flows into that right atrium, it's passively falling into the right ventricle, because this valve is open. This pressure is really low. All of a sudden, it starts filling up, and this pressure gets greater than the pressure here and the pressure here. So the atriums contract, pushing the rest of the blood that's sitting in the atrium down into the ventricle. This valve shuts. Now the right ventricle, and I'm talking about them separately, but the right ventricle and left ventricle, they do the same thing at the same time but we're gonna talk about them separately. So now the right ventricle is charged, right? If you remember from last week, the filling of the ventricles help with the push. So now we've got this water balloon in our chest and it's filled up to max capacity that it can be. And there's a lot of pressure. So what that does is it now pushes against this valve and as it ejects the blood, it pushes that valve open and flows out. You can see here, that's another thing about the valves. If you see here, do you see how these valves close? If you're looking, if you're sitting in the ventricle and you're looking at these valves, these doors open inward. So if you push against a door, I, my door is over there, that's why I looked. If you push at a door that opens inward, you're not gonna be able to open it, you gotta pull it open. So the blood over here on the right atrium is what's gonna be able to open that valve because the door opens outward. This door opens outward from the right ventricle. So you're sitting here in the ventricle, you're looking at these valves, you're sitting here in the ventricle. Here's your little body. You're happy because you're in the ventricle of the heart and it's cool to look at. 
these doors open away from you. So when you push blood against it, it's going to be able to open that up and push it out. Same thing with the left side. You sew the pulmonary veins, drain blood into the left atrium, push on that valve, fill up this left ventricle, left ventricle gets all charged up, it shuts these valves, opens up these valves, and pushes the blood out to the rest of the body through the aorta. So blood flows right atrium, pushes through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle, pushes out through the pulmonary valve, through the pulmonary arteries to the lungs, gets some nice O2, comes back through the pulmonary veins into the left atrium, and then through the mitral valve into the left ventricle and out through the aortic valve. Confused yet? It'll be good. This will be fun. Sometimes I wonder what it'd be like to ride on a red blood cell and go through the whole cardiac cycle and oxygenation and go and see the oxygen leave the red blood cell. And I think that would be really cool to do if we were tiny and we wouldn't die inside someone's body. But I think it would be cool to ride a red blood cell. So here's your first animation of the night. I thought this was really cool because it kind of showed you the different valves. So, oh, where's my pen? Oh, here we go. So here's the atria filling up, pushing blood through here. It's getting pumped out through the pulmonary artery. Here's the aorta over here. This is the aorta. Here's the uh, the mitral valve over here. The uh, aortic valve is up behind this skin flap here. Okay, so that's pretty cool. I could probably stare at this all day and just kind of watch it. It's kind of mesmerizing, if you ask me. Okay, moving on. So this is an actual heart, and I want to show this because it's, we don't actually, it, all the pictures in anatomy books and all of that really show these ventricles and eight, eight, um, ventricles and the atria like really, really big and wide open. And of course, when blood is pumping through there, it is going to be a little bit wider. But when you do a cross section of the heart, they're actually, they actually look pretty tiny. But if you can see like this muscle here, it's, it, this is a normal heart, but this muscle, it's got to be strong because it's got to pump all that blood everywhere. So if you can imagine these, this muscle being stretched out thin and then that pressure pushing against the valves to push the blood out, you can understand why when blood fills it up, it, it can really create more pressure for it to expel the blood. So uh, the heart is very interesting to me. I actually wanted it to be cardiac surgeon in high school and then I didn't want to be a cardiac surgeon. Um, I'm glad that I, I'm a nurse and I get to do streams and teach you all about the heart. I'm, I'm very thankful that I'm a nurse. I, I would not be a happy, I would not be a happy doctor. I'd be one of the doctors that made everyone's life miserable. Nobody wants that. All right, now we're going to talk about the anatomy of the electrical part of the heart, okay? So the SA node sits up here, and this is a bundle of cells that can produce electricity spontaneously, and then it goes down these pathways, it's called internodal pathways, to the AV node. So you got ugh, the sinus atrial node, then you come down here, you got the AV node, the atrioventricular node here. I think that's what it's called. At any rate. And so this, what happens is this produces a ticket for the electrical impulse to come down these pathways. So these electrical impulses ride the train down these pathways, comes to the AV node. The AV node here checks the tickets of those electrical pulses. So there's a little bit of a delay, then says, okay, y'all are good to go and it shoots it down these bundle branches. So you got here, you got the 
sorry, you got the, my brain stopped. Okay. You've got the bundle branch here on the right, you got the bundle branch on the left, and then you've got these little offshoots off of the bundles. Those are Purkinje fibers. And each one of these have a different rate. But one thing, when you're looking at an EKG, I want you to remember this picture, because sometimes you're gonna see delays in QRSs, you're gonna see delays in the PR interval, and all this has to do with this. So when you have an enlarged heart, sometimes you're going to have a wider QRS because this here, it's stretched out. It's stretched out because the heart is enlarged. So it takes more time for that electrical impulse to travel all the way to where it needs to go. So sometimes if you have an enlarged heart or one side is more enlarged than the other, then you'll find that there's a slow del or there's a delay in the conduction of that electricity. I just the heart just amazes me. Like this thing, it just amazes me. It generates its own electricity to be able to pump. It's just it's amazing to me. They actually for transplants they they have uh, for organ transplants when they have a, a donor they can actually keep the heart beating outside the body and it actually can extend the life of that heart t until it gets to where the recipient of that heart is it's very interesting if you saw Grey's Anatomy, they had something like that on there and they made a big deal about it and everyone was babysitting the heart or something. Stupid like that. I'm not a huge fan of Grey's Anatomy. It's not realistic. Okay, so like I said, like I said, the each of these different electrical pathways have different rates associated with it. So your SA node, that is a normal place. That is the place where it should be coming from. The electrical activity should be coming from. So that rate of firing, the electrical impulses, is going to be between 60 and 100. So when you have electrical impulses at 60 to 100 and that travels down these pathways, your heartbeat should be, should be around 60 to 100. Your AV node here, it slows down as you get further and further. So your AV node here is of a rate of 40 to 60. Your branches are 40 to 45. Your fibers down here is 20 to 40. So why, are, why should you know the rates of these? If you have an abnormal heart rhythm or heart rate, it could mean that it is associated with one of these nodes or areas that electrical impulses can come from. So if the SA node fails, let's say you have a heart attack and it kills off the SA node, then your AV node is going to take over. And each one of these, like your muscle fibers, can also generate an electrical activity. But your AV node would be the next one to take over. So then your heart rate will drop to 40 to 60. And then if your AV node fails, so your SA node's out of commission, your AV node is out of commission, then it starts relying on the branches to do the work and then the fibers. So it's really important to know your rates so that way if you do notice something wrong, you can start eliminating different disease processes or in including them and kind of discussing that with a provider. Okay, now we're going to talk about the anatomy of an EKG strip. So, I want to make sure I tell you everything where it's at. So, let's start with the strip. So, forget about this rhythm looking thing. We're going to start with the strip first. So, your 
EKG, EKG comes out on this grid. And sometimes the grid is green, sometimes it's red, sometimes it's blue, it's just black. It just, it depends on where you work and what company they use. But you're gonna see a lot of different colors. The colors doesn't matter, it's the spacing. This, going this way, represents time. So going that way will represent time. Going up is voltage. So how much the heart is putting out? How much electricity? I don't worry so much about voltage. And in my career, I don't really worry too much about voltage. We'll touch on it a little bit when we talk about 12 leads. But the thing that is really important for you to read up on and think about is the time portion because as nurses we do measure out these different intervals and we can figure out whether or not there's a delay in response which means there's stretching of the muscle or there's some sort of dysfunction there's block there's ischemia to the heart whichever might be causing the delay so two other things i want to talk about here is repolarization and depolarization and this is the these two topics talk about the change in the membrane potential of those pathways to carry the electrical impulse so up here is positive, this is negative down here, this is your isometric line here. Isometric line. So when you repolar when you repolarize, we are we are changing the membrane into a negative value. So repolarize. I think I have that backwards. At any rate, when the electrical impulse goes down the heart, we'll, we'll come back to this topic. I reviewed over this before coming here and now I can't. I'm screwing myself up in my brain. But that's okay. We'll figure it out together. Let me grab my phone. All right, so no, I was right. Okay, so depolarization is when we change the membrane potential to a positive, and then repolarization is when we reset everything. So repolarization, we set it back to a negative. So here, here, that's repolarization. So P, I had it right the first time. I just had to read on in my notes. So P, what does P stand for? So P is actually the depolarization, see it's a positive, depolarization of the atrias. So here's where the atrias are being depolarized and then it's traveling down and then it sets off the ventricles, depolarizes them, and then you come here and everything resets. T is the repolarization of the ventricles. So this is where the atrius P here, let me get my laser, P is where you have contraction of the, vent, uh, of the atrias, the QRS complex here, is the contractions of the ventricles and then T is repolarization of everything so make sure I covered everything okay. this is like the reset T is the reset now P to R here this little interval right here this line that is where the AV node is taking tickets so this is the delay in the AV node. 
So P is the atrias are getting electrocuted, they contract, goes to the AV node, there's a pause, we gotta make sure all the electrical impulses have a ticket. All right, they do, we get send, send it down the ventricles, we have ventricular contraction, and then we have heart reset. I put these numbers up here. They're important to know, and we'll touch back on them again. They're important to know though, because some of the rhythms when we talk about it, we need to know the PR interval. And the QT interval is very important to know about, especially when you have certain med medications, because certain medications such as Zofran can increase the QT interval. You wanna be careful with that. Let's talk a little bit about this grid, because the grid, like I said, tells you the time, right? So each little square is 0 0.04 seconds. So this little square is 0 0.04, okay? This large square is 0.2 seconds. So five little squares across is 0.2 seconds. Okay. Now, when we use, we go five across, five large squares. So from here, one, two, three, four, and then behind this paper, five. That's gonna be one second. Normally, a strip is going to come out in six, six, in 300, in 300 squares. So it's going to be a total of six seconds. We can multiply that by 10, and that way you get your 60 seconds. <clears throat> so most rhythm strips are going to come out like that. Um, you're your six seconds so that you can multiply it and as you get better at it you're gonna be able maybe you won't be able to say a rate per se but you'll be able to say okay this one is fast this one is slow but at any rate when we start looking at 12 lead kgs you want to know the time frame for each of these squares because it's gonna it's gonna help you measure out how long some of these are so for example our PR interval here, so this is P to R, one, two, three, four, five, six, about six and a half, seven. For easy, easy sake, we'll say seven. So then the easy way to do this is we're going to multiply this by 4. We get 28. Remember, each of those little squares are 0 0.04. So then we go ahead and we got 0.28 seconds. Okay. That makes sense? Okay. This is a little graph for you. This is kind of what we um, talked about. We've got your atrial depolarization with the P wave. We got the delay where the AV node is taking electrical impulse tickets, making sure everyone has their ticket. That is that little PR interval, the PR segment. We got ventricular depolarization right here that causes the ventricles to push that blood out. That's our QRS complex. We got ventricular repolarization, our T wave where everything kind of just resets. And then we have no electric, no electric, electrical activity. That's our isoelectric line. So that's the line that I, this one here. Every, that's your baseline. Everything should return back to baseline. Okay. So here's another way we can see it. We're gonna go through this a little bit. So you can kind of visualize what the heart's doing during the electric, electrical activity. So 
your P wave is going to travel down, it stops there. You can see it with the QRS, it goes to the ventricles, causes them to contract, push the blood out, and then everything resets with the T wave. Sometimes I lay awake at night visualizing this because I'm a nerd, but it's, it's really cool. The next picture is going to be even cooler. So this, we, it, it looks really busy, but we're going to go through it one by one. So here, going across this time, going up and down, here's pressure here. So we have our EKG. We have the depolarization of the atrias. Pressure right now in the aorta is pretty low because the blood has already gotten out, right? We're getting ready to pump more blood into the aorta. And here they're slowly filling up. EDV is end diastolic, end diastolic uh, volume in the uh, ventricles. So atrias contract. That means that the pressure in the ventricles now are at the highest point. If you see here, at the end of diastole, the highest point of pressure in the ventricles here. We've got increased pressure. We've got a decreased pressure in atrials because the blood is gone from there, right? So then our, a, our AV valves close. The valves between the atrias and the ventricles, they close off because they're, the pressure in the ventricles are now so high, we're getting ready to eject that blood out. So, now we got the QRS complex. What happens with that? Well now, the QRS complex comes down, causes the ventricles to contract and push the blood out. So our aortic pressure goes way up, our ventricular pressure goes way up because we're pushing our atrial pressure goes down because now everything's empty and slowly you can see the ventricular volume go down because we're pushing it all out into the aorta. Right here is where our pressure starts to drop off in the ventricles. What does that cause? It's going to cause the semilunar valves or the, the aortic and pulmonary valves to go ahead and shut down because now our pressure is starting to go down in those ventricles. And then the AV valves open back up as the pressure in the ventricles go down and the atrial pressure goes up. You can see just a little bit. The atriums of the heart is not going to have as much pressure as the ventricles. They don't really need to. A lot of the blood is going to passively fill and then all the atrias have to do is push that blood into the ventricles. They don't have to push blood to the rest of the body. So they don't really need to be muscular and, and have high pressure. The ventricles, on the other hand, they need to have that pressure build up. They need to be stronger. Their walls are thicker because they have to push blood to the rest of the body. So your atrial pressures are always going to be lower than your ventricle pressures. Okay. Just a couple different pictures to, to view how all this fits together. And all I did is I found this on Google, Google Images. I just went ahead and Googled um, EKG electrophysiology GIF, G-I-F. And then I just copied and pasted these. So you can always find them. And then if you... I really encourage you to sit and just think through it and try to imagine and visualize what happens at each of these stages because it'll help you understand better when something does go wrong or if things are normal, you can understand what is happening within the, the body at those times. All right, these are the steps that I use to read a heart rhythm. You may hear other ways to do it, but this is my tried and true way. And we're going to cover just the first uh, six steps, 
Um, the rest of the steps will get more in depth when we talk about more complicated rhythms. But I am going to share them with you regardless. All right, so number one, we have to look at the rhythm strip. We have to figure out is the rate, is the rhythm and rate regular or irregular? So what I like to do, and I'll show you in a second I have a strip, is I take a piece of paper and I mark out on the paper where all the QRSs are and it's it you can visualize it a little bit better to see if all of those lines march out. A lot of times if you're technology now we don't really need them but we have calipers and I have calipers and they're just they're um, it's a tool that you come out like this and then you can march out your rhythms with the calipers and that too will be able to tell you if they're even because if you have to expand those calipers out to meet each of those marks well then you've got an irregular rhythm but if they if you're able to turn that caliper around and around and it matches each QRS the top of each QRS then you got a regular rhythm so number one is it regular or irregular most of the time 80% of the time, 95% of the time, you're able to look at a strip and say, yeah, that's even. That's regular. Two, what is the rate? Is it normal? Is it fast? Is it slow? Most of the strips you get on tests are going to be a six second strip. So you're going to be able to multiply it by 10. And if you know what a normal heart rhythm or heart rate should be, then you'll be able to tell if it's normal, fast, or slow. Again, this is another thing you're going to be able to see and you're going to say, yeah, that's slow, that's fast, that looks normal. But feel free, you can always count it out to see how many are in the strip, a six second strip. Next, are there P waves? Are there P waves? If there are P waves, then you know that the uh, SA node is working and is it, and is firing to the, the ventricles. Next, you want to know if there's QRS complexes. That sounds really stupid, but there are rhythms where you won't have QRS complexes and those are deadly. So you want to make sure that you have P waves and that you have QRS complexes. And does every QRS have a P? And this is going to be important, especially when we talk about some of our blocks. Because depending on where that block is or, yeah, depending on where the block is, some of the QRS complexes are not going to have a P wave. So you want to know if there's P waves, there's QRS waves, does every QRS have a P wave? P and QRS, they need to be together. They're buddies. They're codependent on each other. They need to have each other in each other's lives to be normal. And then last but not least, and this is going to apply a lot more to when we talk about blocks, but what is the PR interval? And if you remember, we want our PR interval to be less than 0 0.01, I believe. Let me see. want it to be 0.12 to 0.2. If it's longer than that, we know that there's a too much of a delay. All right, so when we start getting into more advanced rhythms, we want to know what is the duration of QRS. Remember what I said, if time passes by, that makes that QRS wider, right? Because each of those tiny squares is time passing by. So if you have a wide QRS, that means more time is being taken for that electric electrical activity get down to the ventricles. So if your QRS is wider than what it should be, it might mean that your heart is a little bit bigger or there is some sort of delay in the electrical activity getting to the ventricles. Could be a heart attack, ischemia, that sort of thing. This is going to apply when we look at our 12 leads. What does your ST segment look like? So a ST segment, if it's elevated, then it could mean that you are having a heart attack. You're having a 
ischemic attack on your heart, which is a heart attack. Okay. And then what does the T wave look like? You want to know if the T wave is really, really high, if it's inverted. Sometimes inversion means that you have ischemia, really peaked T waves can mean an elect electrolyte abnormality. So you want to look at your S or your T wave, see what that looks like. And then QT interval, like I said, a lot of medications can elongate that QT interval. And you don't really want to elongate that because that delays the heart repolarization to be able to complete another cardiac cycle. So again, here's this. So let's apply it to this strip. So first, is this regular or irregular? So if we were to mark this out, you were to take your piece of paper and you were to mark this out, put little tick marks here, one there, you have one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. So you mark this out on a piece of paper, then you pick your piece of paper up. And if you have calipers, then you march it out. But if we just eyeball it, it looks regular. So we have a regular rhythm. Is it normal, fast, or slow? Well, this is a six second strip, so let's count it out. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six, six times 10, 60. So our rate is 60, that's normal, right? Are there P waves? Let's see, here's a P wave, here's a P wave, here's a P wave, so on and so forth. So yeah, we have P waves. P waves, check. Are there QRX complexes? Yep, here they are. QRS, QRS, QRS. So we have QRS complexes. Okay. PR interval, we can figure that out. So PR interval, it's not going to really apply to this strip. PR interval is here. Ah. There, here, what do we have? We have about five, five squares, right? One, two, three, four, five. So we have five squares. So we're good there. Our PR interval is good. So if everything checks out, everything is normal, your rate is normal, you have peaks, you have QRSs, the, each QRS has a P wave, the rhythm is regular, and everything checks out, then it's normal sinus rhythm. So what we're looking at here is normal sinus rhythm. Anything that deviates from this means that it's not normal sinus, it's something else. It can still be a sinus rhythm, and it doesn't mean that it's abnormal for the patient, but this right here with a regular, with a regular rhythm, a normal rate, P's and QRS's, they both match up with each other, then we got normal sinus rhythm. Let's talk about the other rhythms. So, what are the rhythms we are gonna talk about? We're gonna talk about some sinus rhythms. We already talked about normal sinus, but we're gonna touch on it again. Atrial rhythms ventricular rhythms, and I'm going to add in there PVCs and PACs because a lot of patients have these. I'm pretty sure like once in a while I can feel a PVC and it just feels like your heart is just like, I don't know how to describe it, but almost like a fluttery, um, at, but it only lasts like for a couple heartbeats. And that's all we're going to talk about for this session. Now the next session we'll talk more about blocks, we'll talk about junctional rhythms, and then we'll start looking at 12 lead EKGs.
So, all the hearts have rhythms. They're all dancing. This made me smile, so I thought I'd add it for you guys. All dancing. They're happy hearts. All right, sinus rhythms. So we got normal sinus. Let's go through our process of figuring it out. Do we have a regular rhythm? Well, that work. let me get my pointer. You can't see my pen very well. It's laser. Don't stare at it. Okay. If we mark it out, we can see that it's all, it looks even. So we do have a regular rhythm. We look here, we have P waves, right? There are P waves. We have QRSs. Here's QRSs. Each QRS has a P wave. So there we go, right? Yep, every QRS has a P wave. And then uh, what's the rate? I forgot that one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we got 60. So this is normal sinus rhythm. Well, what does that look like? That's what your heart's doing in normal sinus. Atrias are contracting, your ventricles are contracting. It's just, your heart's just doing what it's supposed to do, back and forth. Let's look at sinus bradycardia. So, is our rhythm regular? Let's look at our QRSs. They look like they're even, look like they're evenly spaced. I would say that is a regular rhythm. What is the rate? Well, let's see. One, two, three, four. Four times ten, that's forty. Regular or uh, normal rate is sixty to a hundred. So I would say this is slow. So we got slow. Let me get my pen. Oh, I got switched between the two. So we got slow, but it's regular. So we have a, a regular rhythm. So we are sinus, but it's slow. And now we need to figure out, uh, do we have P waves? Yes, we have P waves. Here's our little P waves, those little bumps. Do we have QRSs? We have QRSs, here they are. And each QRS has a P wave, their little buddy. Cool. So we have a sinus rhythm, but it's slow. So we have sinus bradycardia. Anything that's slow is brady. Anything that's fast is tachycardic or tachy. You can be tachypnic too. So tachy is fast. Brady is slow. What does that look like? Really slow. It's like sinus rhythm, just slowed down. And some people, I have seen healthy people have a low heart rate. Sometimes the heart is super efficient at pumping because someone is athletic they do a lot of lifting or running and their heart is efficient at pumping. So we've got a slower heart rhythm and heart rate, but it's not normal or it's not abnormal for the patient. It, the patient's good to go. And some people, this is abnormal and they need to get a pacemaker. Usually not at 40 beats per minute. And usually you'd see other symptoms with it. All right, so now we look at sinus tachycardia. Same thing. These all look evenly marched out, evenly spaced. So it's a regular rhythm. What is the rate? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we got a heart rate of 110. So it's fast, so we got tachy, tachycardia. So tachy, here's our word tachy. Well, let's make sure that it's sinus. Do we have P waves? Yep, they're almost hidden in that T wave, right? So we got our little P waves. Do we have QRSs? We have QRSs. Now, does each QRS have a P wave? Yep. If you see, they all have one. And this may seem super tedious to go through it like this, every single rhythm, but as you get more comfortable, soon you won't be able to have to do that. You'll just have to go, do I have P waves? 
Oh yeah, I have P waves. It looks like a sinus rhythm. Okay, is it fast, slow? What do we have going on other than these QRXs? QRSs. But um, for now, we're gonna go through each of them with the the same system so that you get used to it. What does that look like? All right, it looks like this sinus, right? The atrials go, the ventricles go. Atrials, ventricles, but super fast. This can be hard on the patient because you're not giving the heart enough chance to get blood filling up in those areas, right? So unless you're run, if you're sitting in the bed and you're tachycardic like this, it can cause some issues because you're not being able to get enough blood. If you're exercising, I mean, that's that's fine. You're going to have an increased heart rate. It doesn't mean that you're going to be unstable from it. You're not. It, it, it means that you're still being able to pump blood around. And then I want to add this because sometimes you'll see patients that have sinus arrhythmia and it doesn't mean that it's abnormal. Some people have a heart rhythm that increases with inspiration. Their heart rate goes up slightly and then it'll come down slightly. So what you can see here is they're, they're a little irregular, right? We got longer, longer, and then all of a sudden they speed up here. But if you were to march this out, this is evenly spaced, this is evenly spaced, and if you look at the faster ones, they're evenly spaced. You also have to look and see we've got P waves. If you have a rhythm that looks irregular, you want to see if you have P waves. You have QRSs. So each QRS has a P wave. So this just means that you have sinus arrhythmia. And if this strip played out, what you would see is that it would get faster and then it would slow down a little bit, it would get faster. And that's, it doesn't necessarily mean it's abnormal for the patient. If the patient is stable otherwise, then you don't have to worry about it. It's probably normal for the patient. Okay. Atrial rhythms. We're gonna start with my favorite because I like a flutter. I love a flutter. It, oh, I just, I see this on the monitor and it's not an amazing rhythm. It's not really great for the patient, but oh, I love it so much. And I don't know why. I just think it looks cool. I don't know, it's my favorite rhythm. When I see people in a flutter, I just, oh, it's so beautiful to me. I love it. All right. So in your atrial rhythms, sometimes you won't get that P wave. Almost all your atrial rhythms will not have a P wave. So, do we have a regular rhythm? Yeah, if you look at these, they're all evenly spaced. Do we have P waves? Look at that. These are not P waves. Do we have QRSs? Yeah, we have QRSs. But the sawtooth here means that your atrias are firing at each one of these. These are each little firings. So your atrias are pumping at each one of these and your ventricles are pumping at each one of these. So these are atria, atria. So what's going on is atria, 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 ventricle, atria, 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 atria. So it's almost like your atrias and your ventricles are disconnected. What does that look like on our heart? Just like that. Your upper, your atrias are going like this at their rate, and your ventricles are pumping where they're supposed to be. They're having a dance party. And I have a, a video clip at the end of all of our atrial rhythms. I don't know why, but this reminds me, atrial rhythms remind me a lot about of uh, Napoleon Dynamite and his last dance, that dance at the end of the movie. And I don't know why, but it just does. Um, but your, in your A flutter, your atrias are firing at a regular rate, faster than your ventricles, and once in a while the AV node allows those impulses to go into the ventricles 
to fire and that would get us our QRSs. Next, AFib. I don't know why, but this rhythm, it took me a long time to figure this rhythm out. And I, I did it incorrectly at first, trying, I just kind of guessed, oh, that looks like AFib. But I never really understood why it was AFib. So I'm gonna tell you why it's AFib. So that way you can not make the mistake I did. So AFib will always be irregular. You will never have a regular rhythm and your patient be an AFib. So let's see here. Do we have a regular rhythm? No, look at this. This is evenly spaced. This may be evenly spaced, but look at this. This isn't, this isn't. So we've got areas where it's irregular. So this is definitely irregular. Do we have P waves? No, we got these little swigglies. These little swigglies mean that your heart is quivering. There's no rhyme or reason to the electrical activity in this heart, in the atrias. So you got these quiverings going on. So there's no P waves. Do you have QRSs? Yeah, you have QRSs. So we got that going for us, right? We're pumping blood to our body. It's just not all the time. So irregular, no P waves, but we have QRSs. Then we have a fib. What is your heart doing with that? I can't remember if I have the heart next or the next rhythm? No, I don't. Okay. So AFib, you can have just regular AFib, which is this, but then you can have AFib with RVR. And what that means is that your ventricles are now pumping faster than what it should. So these are AFib. See, there's no P waves. Your atrias are still quivering. You see this? All these little swiggles here. Your atrias are still quivering, but now more than not, the signals are getting to the ventricles, causing it to fire randomly as the signals get through. So this can be, this can be pain or not painful, hurtful for the patient. This can cause them to become unstable. They could drop their blood pressure because they're not giving the heart enough time to fill those ventricles up. Just like with tachycardia, sinus tachycardia, we are not filling our ventricles well enough on some of these that are really close together. So we don't always have the best blood pressure. A lot of times what we need to do when we have a fib with RBRs, we need to slow that rate down. So we'll give metoprolol or we'll do amiodarone something that will help slow the heart rate down and kind of block some of those signals. So what does this look like? Well, your atrias, you can see all these yellow dots are electrical activity. And only once in a while you get one down to the, uh, to the ventricles, right? But your atrias up here are just jiggling. They don't know what they're doing. They're just jiggling. Your ventricles are still with the show, right? They're still doing it, but your atrias are jiggling. If you guys have seen the movie Hitch, it's kind of like when, um, oh, what's his face, is dancing with the, the celebrity, and the celebrity, she's just dancing, right? So she's the ventricle. She's, she's got her rhythm going, and then he's just all over the place. Those are, he's the ventricles. He's just all over the place, doing his own thing and then she's just the ventricles just beating when they need to beat. Maybe not all the time, but like regularly, but you're going to have the ventricles beating and not quivering. They have some sort of organization. All right. So, this can be called atrial tachycardia and also can be called supraventricular tachycardia or SVT. And this is a very extreme high heart rate that is coming from the atri atriums. The electrical impulse is coming from the atriums. It's coming down the line and it's just, your heart is just pumping away. 
Some of these are up in 180s, 200s, and you've got stable and unstable. And when you have stable supraventricular tachycardia, then you can try different things to cause that heart rate to go down. You can try vagal maneuvers, bearing down. You can, some people splash ice cold water in their face, kind of help with that vagal maneuver. Sometimes that doesn't work and then you have to give them adenosine. But you want to try those ways first. The other thing you can do is you can shock these people and you have to synchronize it. You have to synchronize your defibrillator because if you shock when in a certain part of the rhythm it'll cause you to go into an unorganized rhythm. Right now this is pretty organized. You know your heart may not be pumping great but it's still organized and pumping. If you hit your heart with some electricity when it's still trying to reset you could throw it off and go into V-fib. So if you ever need to cardiovert someone, shock them out of this rhythm, you want to make sure you synchronize it. So this is one way and one, um, one rhythm strip of SVT. You see everything's regular, but you're extremely fast. Do you have P waves? Yes, they're a little hidden. Sometimes you don't get any P waves. Sometimes it's just QRS and these T waves. That's really fast. This is also SVT. If you can see, you've got your T waves and your QRS, it's just downward deflected. So this is in a different lead, but this is SVT as well. When I worked in the ER, I had a patient come in. She It was like two or three in the morning and she said that she woke up out of a dead sleep and out of breath and she felt like she was running and her heart was racing and so her neighbor brought her in and she was in the triage room and I remember hooking her up to the monitor and the monitor said something like 202 or 205 I was like oh hmm let me check her so whenever your monitors are reading something weird you always check your patient right just don't mess with the monitor check your patient so I checked her, her radial pulse. Sure enough, her heart was beaten. So I uh, ran, got some help because she wasn't in a wheelchair and she was getting more and more out of, out of consciousness. Ran and got some help. And I said, hey, she's got a really fast heart rate. We brought her back and we ended up giving her adenosine. And what adenosine does is it just resets the heart. It stops everything and resets it. Same thing like cardioversion, but it, it's a medication. When you give that medication, you want to hook your patient up to a monitor in case you need to get them back, um, either with CPR or shocking them if they go into a funky rhythm. But the next slide here, I'm going to play this for you, and it's when someone gives a patient an SVT adenosine, everyone just kind of holds their breath because the patient goes asystole for a little bit. And it feels weird for the patient because, you know, their, their heart is not beating for a good little bit there. I mean, it feels like forever. It's a few seconds only, but it feels like forever that you see this flat line and their heart is not moving. So here we go. They're giving the adenosine. You look at the monitor, flat. Everyone is holding their breath, waiting for that heart rhythm to come back. And there you go, we're back to normal. Let's see that one more time. It's actually very neat. And a dentist, you gotta push it real fast, flush it in real fast. But that flat line is probably, when I was a nursing student, saw this for the first time, a scariest thing. All right, and then here, Napoleon Dynamite, our A flutter, oops. Our A flutter dance. That's what I think about. Whenever I see him dance, I think of A flutter. Whenever I see A flutter, I see his dance. They are intertwined forever in my brain. All right, let's talk about our ventricular rhythms now. These can be deadly. 
Some of them are deadly. You gotta act on them. So we've got ventricular tachycardia or VTAC. This, we've got two types. We've got monomorphic and polymorphic. Monomorphic, mono means one, so they all look alike. Every single one looks alike. So let's see here. This looks funky, right? So we have a regular rhythm, right? These are all marched out regular. Regular rhythm. Do we have P waves? No, there's no P waves in there. Do we have QRSs? Yeah, they're really wide. They're really bizarre looking, but they're there. And the rate, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, it's fast, right? So this is really fast. Some people can have a, a, a pulse with this. Some people do not. If you do not have a pulse, you need to get them out of this rhythm. You need to shock them. You need to get them out of this rhythm so that they have a pulse. Because sometimes this can cause no blood flow. There's no blood being pumped with a heart moving that fast. Then we've got, oh, sorry. This is what it looks like. I have two different hearts. They both look the same. It's just different views. So the atrias here, they're just pumping along. They're cool. They're doing their job, but your ventricles are wigging out. They are pumping fast. They are getting that blood out, not always giving it a chance to fill all the way up. So some of these beats are not perfusing beats. Polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. This is also Trissades de points. Why? If you look, it looks like it's twisting. And torsades de point means twisting on a point in French. So you got a red, um, tachycardia that's up and then it goes real tiny and then it goes up again and real tiny. You need to get them out of this rhythm real fast too. Because not all of these are perfusing rhythms. Here's another view of that heart. You can see those ventricles are going at it. The atria are fine, but the ventricles have this electrical impulse that's just causing it to beat. These rhythms are coming from the ventricles. They're totally ignoring the atria's signals. It's just doing its own thing. Next we have ventricular fibrillation. When you hear ventricular fibrillation, V-fib, you want to think D-fib. This is where your heart, it's, it's completely crazy. It needs a good slap across the face to reset it. It is quivering, just like that A-fib, the atria is uh, just quivering. Your whole heart is quivering. When it's quivering, there's not effective pumps. You have no blood flow you don't get your heart out of the rhythm that's just making it quiver then you're not having any blood flow to organs to your brain and that is what can cause death so when you see v-fib this rhythm right here you want to think d-fib get those pads on that patient and shock them what does the heart look like with this like that see it's just jiggling all over it has no rhyme or reason it's just wiggling that heart needs a good slap across the face, get it back into motion, get it focused on its mission, and that is to pump blood to the rest of the body. Okay. They used to do they used to do pericardial thumbs. I don't they're not supposed to do it anymore. I have heard of people doing it. And sometimes it, it's just not effective. The effective thing to do is to shock the patient. But they used to come over and just pop the patient on the chest and that would get the heart back into a regular rhythm. You know, my mom, I don't know if she just started to be a nurse or if she was a nursing student, I forget, but she said she was in and the doctor was explaining something about the heart and the patient went into this rhythm and he did a pericardial thump, just popped him on the chest and the rhythm went back to normal. I actually, I actually knew a nurse years ago that told me about it too and uh, he actually did it and popped the patient back into a normal rhythm. 
So more often than not, it does not work. So don't do that. Plus, if you have a patient that has surgery, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Make sure that when you have VFib that you shock your patient. Your patient needs you to act quickly. And pericardial thump, you don't want to mess around with somebody's life like that. All right, and then our good old asystole. There is zero activity going on. There's no electrical activity. There's no heart pumping. This is a rhythm. Your heart is pretty much standing still. When you're dying, that's what you'll see. When you finally passed away, you'll see asystole. If you're not supposed to be dying and you see asystole, this is a rhythm that you cannot shock. You cannot shock a heart back to a rhythm if there is no electrical activity going on. What you need to do is you need to jump start the heart with some medication to get that electrical activity going that you can possibly shock. But asystole is a rhythm that you cannot shock. The heart is just, I don't even have a picture, the heart is just sitting there. Nothing. There's no electrical activity. There's no movement because there is no electrical activity just sitting there. The last thing I want to talk about are PVCs, premature ventricular contractions, and also premature atrial contractions because you will see these. You'll see different kinds. Um, and like I said, I think I pretty much, I when I'm dehydrated, I feel it more where I may throw some PVCs. These are not necessarily a bad thing unless they affect the underlying rhythm. So sometimes you can have a PVC. This is a PVC. This is a PVC. They're wide QRS looking things that if you look on the monitor and you have an A-line, it doesn't perfuse a lot, but it pushes a little bit of blood out but it's not an effective rhythm. So if you throw one or two, nah, you're still gonna be fine. We run into issues when you have a rhythm where you have a QRS and then PVC, QRS, PVC, QRS, PVC, because those QRSs are efficiently pumping blood, right? These PVCs are not. So your rate is, you cannot count this as part of your rate. Your rate, for example, in this rhythm is only 40. Your patient may not be able to handle 40. And if you're in a rhythm where you've got a QRS, PVC, PVC, QRS, PVC, PVC, then that's even a lower rate. So you want to start worrying about your PVCs when you have multiple ones in a row, when you have multiple ones on a rhythm strip. QRS, QRS, PVC, that is trigeminy. QRS, PVC, QRS, PVC, that is bigeminy. So it, it depends on how many actual QRSs you have that can cause you to worry. PACs, they look like a QRS or they look like a regular rhythm, but it's just kind of thrown in there. So you got, you're cruising along, you're just cruising along, but then you throw this PAC and then there's a pause because your heart's like, whoa, what the heck was that? So you're cruising along, throw a PAC, your heart's like, oh, and a little bit of stay shock here. And then it goes, all right, starts grooving again. This is also not super dangerous. It's just if you start having it multiple times in a row, you want to start figuring out what's going on. So not super concerning unless it occurs more frequently than not. Okay. Now we're going to start reading some rhythms. If you guys are ready. So for these, I have a strip and then I have all of the answers that we have gone over already, like all the different rhythms that we have gone over, and then we'll figure out which one's the right one. So here's our rhythm strip. Let me get my pen. 
so we can write. Okay, let's go through our, our motions here. Is it a regular rhythm? It looks regular. I would say regular rhythm. Do we have a regular rate? Let's see, one, two, three, four. That's 40. So our rate's 40. That's pretty slow, right? So what is slow? Brady. Bradycardia. Okay, so regular, it's 40. Do we have P waves? Yeah, we have P waves. P waves check. We have QRSs. Check. Each QRS has a P wave. There's its little buddy. Check. So what can it be? Well, we know it's a sinus rhythm, right? Because everything checks out. What is the one abnormal thing? The slow heart rate, bradycardia. So out of this, it would be bradycardia. Ding, did you get it? All right, here we go. Let's see, looks irregular to me. Does it look irregular to you? If you march it out, see these are too close together. These are far apart, so we're irregular. Okay, what's the rate? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen, it's 160, right? That's fast. Okay. Do we have P waves? Are these P waves? They're not P waves. Are they P waves? No. Do we have QRSs? Yes. We have QRSs. There's our QRSs. So P waves, there are none. QRS we have. Does every P every QRS have a P wave? No. So we know that this is an issue with the atrias because the P waves are missing. So which one would it be? So we can get rid of these. We can get rid of these. We can get rid of these. So we're focusing on this. Well, is it A flutter? What is A flutter? Remember, A flutter is our atria is irregular, but they're just faster than our ventricles are firing. This is definitely irregular. So we're not talking about A flutter here. Another classic sign of A flutter is that sawtooth, where your atrias are contracting. And then you have your ven, those are really bad QRSs. But your atrias have this sawtooth look to it. So that's a flutter. Um, is it a fib, atrial fibrillation? I would, because if you look here, we don't really have a good organized rhythm here in the atrias. So we're air, uh, we're quivering up there in the atrias, and then. Atrial tachycardia, no, because this would be it would be regular if it was SVT. So we got atrial fibrillation. I'm telling you that was the, it took me forever to get that one, and it shouldn't have. All right, let's look at this one. We have a regular rhythm. Yep, it's regular. It looks regular. What's the rate? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17. Woo. All right. Do we have P waves? I don't see any. Okay. So we got an atrial rhythm. Do we have QRSs? Yes. Lots of QRSs, huh? Do they, are they buddied up? Well, we don't have P waves, so they're not buddied up. So we have an atrial rhythm, right? So let's get rid of our sinuses. Let's get rid of our ventriculars. Let's get rid of these. 
Is it a flutter? Well, we don't have that regular atrial sawtooth look to it, right? Is it AFib? Well, it's regular, so it's not AFib. So what is it? It's SVT. This is what you would try to do vagal maneuvers on. You don't always have to be above 200, but you will have P waves hidden somewhere. Either they're not there or they're hidden. All right, so what is the answer? ATAC or SVT? I don't know why we can't just stick with one name, but I want to give you both. All right, let's see. Is it regular? Well, I don't see anything. So we're not regular. We're not anything. Do we have a rate? There's no rate. Do we have QRSs? Or I'm sorry, do we have P waves? Hmm. I don't really see any P waves. Do we have QRSs? No QRS. So this is not buddied up. Is it a flat line though? So can this be a systole? Well, some people may call it a systole, but remember a systole is a flat line. There's no electrical activity whatsoever. If you look, you have we have some electrical activity because we've got little swiggles. We've got little swiggles here. If no one was touching the patient and we see these little swiggles, we've got some V-fib going on. One thing, if you're on a monitor, increase the size of your cardiac rhythm, the lead size, and you'll be able to see this will look more like this. You'll see the actual fibrillation. It'll look, well, it won't curve like that, but it'll look like fibrillation not fine like this. So, what is this? V-fib. What do you do with V-fib? You shock them. Shock them right away. V-fib, D-fib. Get that heart slapped across the face. All right, what do we have here? Do we have a regular rate? Well, it looks like it's pretty, it's pretty spread out but it's there, okay? Regular rate, check. What, or regular rhythm, what is the rate? Well, let's count our QRSs. One, two, three, four. So we've got 40 for our rate. Do we have P waves? Yeah, they're a little itty bitty, itty bitty ones. Do we have QRSs? Yeah. We got this weird thing. Weird thing. Weird thing. So we have QRSs. And are they buddied up? Yeah. There's their buddy. These guys don't have any P waves though. But these guys do, so those are buddied up. So what are these? Let's look at our options. Remember, those look like QRSs, but they're real wide. And PVCs, PVCs are premature ventricular contractions. QRSs are ventricular, show ventricular contraction. So PVCs are going to be wide QRS looking things. So we got some PVCs, right? So we know we got PVCs. But what is this? We got regular 40, we got we got a sinus rhythm, right? Because everything checks out except for that slow heart rate. So we've got sinus bradycardia, but we also have PVCs. This would be by Gemini because every second beat has a PVC. This I would be a little concerned for the patient, right? Because the heart rate's really slow. All right, what is this? We have no rhythm, no rate, no P waves, no QRS. Do we have any electrical activity? 
No. I mean, you could maybe say that is, but I don't see any electric electrical activity. So what does no electrical activity mean? There's no heartbeat. There's nothing. The heart's just standing still. So we got A, systole. Some people call this cardiac standstill, I think. I, a systole works just fine for me. So we got A systole. Good. I love this rhythm. Okay. Is it regular? Looks pretty regular. So we got regular. What's the rate? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So our rate's 70. Do we have P waves? Uh, we got these little things, right? Can't really count those as P waves. So we got an atrial rhythm, right? QRSs. We do have QRSs. Ding. So since we don't have P waves, we can't buddy up. So we have an atrial rhythm. So which one is this? It's not any of these. It's not any of these. It's got to be one of these. A flutter. What is A flutter? Giving you all the hints because I love this rhythm. A flutter is when the atrias are doing its thing. They're grooving up there and the ventricles are doing their thing. So that looks pretty much like A flutter, right? Because we got regular atrial atrial rhythms and then regular ventricular rhythms. So is it AFib? No, it's regular. AFib is irregular. Atrial tachycardia? Nope, because we got a regular rate. So we got A flutter going on. Bing! I love A flutter. It's so pretty. All right, what's this? Is it regular? Absolutely not. Look at that. That's all over the place. So it's irregular. What's the rate? Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 150. Do we have P waves? Nah, no. No P waves, right? Do you see any? No, there's no P waves in there. It's all squiggly. Squiggly line. Our puppy's in here. Chilling. QRSs? Yeah, they're here. I see a lot of QRSs. Does every QRS have a P wave? Nope, because there's no P waves. So nope. So we're looking at an atrial rhythm. So what are our options? We can get rid of our sinuses, right? And get rid of these bottom ones. A flutter? No. A flutter is regular. A fib? Yes. Because we got squigglies. Your your atrias are quivering. Freaking out. Is it tachycardic? No. It's irregular. SVT is regular. So we got a fib going on. What's something more? We've got rapid ventricular rate, right? Because we got our heart rate of 150. Is that normal? No, it's high. 60 to 100 is a, a regular heart rate. If you're above 100, you got rapid ventricular rate. Your ventricles are firing fast. So we got AFib with RVR. You need to slow that heart rate down. All right. Are we regular? Yep, we're regular. What's the rate? 7, 8, 9, 90. Okay. Do we have P waves? No. Do we have QRSs? Yeah, we have some pretty funky looking ones. They're wide. They're bizarre. People love the word bizarre with cardiac. So we have a ventricular rhythm, right? Because all of our all of our signals are coming from the ventricles. So if we have no P waves, we can't buddy up. So what do we have here? Well, we can get rid of the atrial rhythms, right? We don't have P waves, so we can get rid of sinuses. 
we can get rid of these, right? So we got ventricular tachycardia, cardia, monomorphic, polymorphic, or V-fib. So we can get rid of V-fib, right? Because we've got some sort of organization going on. V-fib means that your heart is just freaking out and needs a slap across the face. So we have monomorphic or polymorphic tachycardia. Well, mono is one. They all look the same. Poly is more than one. And they all look the same. So it wouldn't be polymorphic. We got monomorphic. V tach monomorphic. If you don't have a pulse, get them out of there. We need to get a better rhythm, a better perfusing rhythm. All right, what do we have here? Is it regular? This is longer than 60 seconds, by the way. Uh, I'm, yeah, longer than 60 seconds. So we're not going to worry about rate, but we are regular. We know that it's a fast rate, right? So we'll just put fast. Do we have P waves? Nope, no P waves, right? I don't see any P waves. Do we have QRSs? Oh. We got this weird looking thing. It's wide, it's weird looking, it's bizarre looking. So we can get rid of our atrials, atrial rhythms, right? Because this is all coming from the ventricles. So what are our answers? can get rid of the sinuses. There's no P waves. You can get rid of the atrial rhythms because there are not really great QRSs here. We can get rid of these. So we got a ventricle rhythm going on. We can get rid of uh, ventricle fibrillation because we have some sort of organization, right? There's some organization going on. So we got monomorphic and polymorphic. So do all of these wide, weird looking QRSs look the same? No. Not like that other picture, right? So this is polymorphic VTAC. If it's not monomorphic, it's polymorphic. Also can be called trissades de points, or just trissades. Which, by the way, if you give magnesium, it'll, fi it'll help fix trissades. All right. This is our last one because it's going to lead into the next session. So what do we have here? We have a whole slew of things, don't we? We started out pretty slow looking, right? Then we go into this weird QRS looking thing and then just nothing. So do we have a regular, let's cut these, let's, let's break this one down. We have one rhythm looking, one type of rhythm looking here, another type looking here, and another type looking here. So we start out pretty regular, right? It looks on those two. We'll put regular with a question mark. Don't know. Those have QRSs. Or I'm sorry, that the rate we can't really tell based off of two, but from experience. This distance is pretty long. So I would guess that it's a slow rate. Do we have P waves? Yeah, we have P waves. Do we have QRSs? Yeah, we have QRS there. So that looks like a sinus rhythm, right? Let's pull up all our answers. So I would say we have a sinus rhythm going on to start. He said that, yes, we do have a sinus rhythm to start. Now let's break it down to this middle part. Is it regular? Yeah. We have a regular rhythm in the middle there. Is it slow? No. If we were to continue this on to a 60 second one, it would be fast, right? So fast. Is there P waves? No. No P waves. Is there QRSs? Well, there's these QRS looking things, but they're wide and bizarre. So we can say, what is this? There's no buddy system. What is this if there's wide, bizarre QRSs that are evenly placed? Monomorphic, right? Event, event, uh, VTAC. 
monomorphic or polymorphic, they all look the same, so it's monomorphic. All right, and then what do we go into the last rhythm here? Is it regular? No. There's, there's no regularity there, is there? Is it, what's the rate? There's really no rate, right? There's nothing going on. Do you have P waves? No, no P waves. QRSs? No, no QRSs. What's going on here? It's just randomized, right? There's no organization whatsoever. So we have a ventricular rhythm just quivering on that line there. So we got some V-fib. What do you do with V-fib? You defibrillate. So this rhythm is someone who was Brady. Their heart is suffering from something, right? Maybe it's lack of blood flow. So they start out slow. Then all of a sudden their heart is starting to give out. It gets into a VTAC rhythm. The atria is just not doing anything. And then they went into V-fib. This can happen. You call for the crash cart right away. When you start seeing this all in a row, you want to call for help. That's all I have. So I hope that this set up a good basis for you. Um, I really do encourage you to look up rhythms. There's a lot of information out there. Um, do, do a couple of quizzes. There's EKG quizzes out there. There we're not, We didn't cover all of them. There's going to be second degree block and first degree block, which we'll cover next time. But it's a good, good practice. And when you're at work or on in your clinical rotation or whatnot, look at rhythms and try and figure out what they are. Talk to your the nurses that are around you and say, Hey, is this some um, sinus rhythm? Is this this? What is that? complex there and the more you do it the more practice you have at it the, the better you'll be at it but until then I'll see you in two weeks two weeks the 16th and we'll talk more rhythms we'll look at blocks and a couple of junctional type rhythms and um, I hope you have a good two weeks have a good one bye